Perfect. Guys, welcome to the Three Star Podcast. My name is Miles. I'm Sean. And we are joined, as always, by the beautiful, handsome Rich. Hello. And behind the cameras, we are joined by our lovely Susie. So, Rich, I think you have some comments for us last week. We're going straight in. Straight into comments corner. Straight into comments corner from, from all you wonderful fans that have actually watched. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching the first two episodes of the Three Star Podcast. Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, and adding some comments. That really gives us a, a good way to start our uh, podcast each and every episode. So keep those coming in. And Rich? Absolutely. So the comments are great. Like I say, it helps us steer what we do. So the first comment is uh, pretty predictable. It is has Sean now watched any Star Wars films? Uh, there's only one way to answer this. No. However, I am up on the memes of the baby Yoda. Oh, has yeah. been very popular. The child. Do the you child know and... who Yoda is? It, the one that doesn't speak correctly and <laughs> small and green. So, not to get confused with one of my ex-girlfriends, actually. but <laughs> uh, I know who Yoda is, um, but I haven't watched any of them yet. Yes, but we are in the middle of Christmas and New Year, so I've got some time to start watching them. Are they? They're not Christmas movies, but are they kind of? Is it something people do at Christmas time? Watch a Star Wars movie. If you if you're that into Star Wars, I guess. I guess. Well, they they used to be on like standard network TV over Christmas every year. So when like ITV or whatever yeah. BBC got it, it would be on every Christmas. So it kind of sort of is a bit of a tra- tradition in my house anyway. You can figure it. Jabba the Hut Santa. The problem is, no. I'm going to be honest. I've put the first one on before, and it is in the seventies. It's one from the 70s. So it's mm. like kind of a... It starts as a tough watch when you've got a lot of like cool CGI stuff on that that you can be watching. I quite think quickly. myself and everyone else is now thinking, when you say the first one... <laughs> so it's the... <laughs> Do okay. you mean... Episode four. It's the one that I'm supposed to watch first. It's... Again, depends yeah. who you speak yeah. to. We'll go with episode four. I haven't, I haven't Was it Darth anything. Vader? I didn't watch all... I watched 10 minutes of it. I think we need to move on because yeah. I'm getting kind of I'm getting a bit angry. <laughs> getting triggered. Next comment. <laughs> Next question. <clears throat> Talk about triggered. Uh, are you ready for this, Miles? Uh, does Miles realise that Harry Potter isn't real? <laughs> Not <Yeah>. even planned. <laughs> so for those who are listening, Miles is donning uh, a I'm going to take a guess here a Hogwarts hoodie that has got the emblems of all the houses on. He does wear this on road. You can catch Miles live and direct, direct wearing his Hogwarts, yeah. Harry Potter stuff, proudly. Um, do you realise it's not real? Just in case. I would never say that to you. But. Just in case <laughs> any muggles out there who think it's not real want to know what house I'm in. If you currently look at my socks. As he pulls up his socks and reveals... Gryffindor. Uh, let me say that again. Gryffindor, baby. And each one of the socks is Gryffindor. That says Fantastic Beast, and my other one's got Gryffindor on I'm glad to see that Miles has brought a little bit of the black country with him to London today because there's holes in those socks as well. (laughs) So he's keeping it real. (laughs) (laughs) But um, Harry Potter is real. I just don't expect a muggle to understand the ways of the wizarding world. Cool. Excellent. Uh, And he's got an Aladdin uh, genie hat on, by the way, as well. So he's gone full out. Magic. This is... There was only a flash of purple away from being the full, <laughs> the full set with Miles. Well, like you, you could say this is advertising or sponsorship deal because that leads into the final question that I've picked up or comment I've picked up today, which is, uh, are the podcasts sponsored by Samsung or is this just kind of one big Samsung advert, which I think is a fair, fair question for somebody. Um, so how it works for everyone that wants to know is myself, Sean, Rich and Susie, we all work for Samsung. However, we wanted to start a tech podcast we work for a tech company, so they got behind us and said, hey, if you, you want to do a tech podcast, here you go. Just don't say anything bad about our competitors and <laughs> name drop us every now and again. So just let you all know, we do record all these podcasts off a Samsung Galaxy S10 5G. It's a cool way to showcase the real way that you can create content using Samsung devices. Um, but it's not yeah. an advert. No, we're not. This no. isn't an advert. We're not going to stick on Samsung. We're not going to force anyone to buy tickets to South Korea. It's just a... It's a welcome relief, really, that we're actually getting paid to talk about tech and we don't have to go uh, yeah, for Samsung. We're just talking about tech. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise there was any monetary gain. Yeah, okay. we need to speak to the bosses about it. 
But that's it. That's the end of the question corner. Oh, question corner, short and sweet today. Thank you very much. So, Miles, there's a few things that I wanted to uh, bring your way. Actually, I've been watched the last uh, couple of episodes, and uh, one of the big things where you were taking the mic out of me really about the um, trailers and movies I haven't seen. Have you seen the Ghostbusters trailer? Because that's the one that I'm most excited about okay. at the minute. Let's let's talk about it. <clears throat> Did you like it? I loved it. But I remember Ghostbusters of old, and I'm not talking about the um, the last Ghostbusters movie. Well played. Mm-hmm. I haven't even seen that one. 2016, was it? 17. Yeah, it, was, it still feels like it was recent, but I didn't like the look of that. I'm talking about the old days when you had Igor. Egon. Egon. <laughs> this is the one he loves, by Ray. the way. Ray was in it. Um, <clears throat> there's yeah. a few of them. Can you name the characters, Rich? Slimer. Well, Egon, Egon Spengler. Spengler. Yeah. Uh, Speng, of course. And then, oh, I need to find them. Bill out. Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray, one of them. And Slimer. We got and Slimer. Stay puff my no, Google no. search might uh, sort that. <clears throat> but I do that subtly. I loved um, Ghostbusters when I was a kid. And my actual fun fact: my earliest memory is my dad getting me the you know the car, the actual. Yeah. He got me that the, one. The, the actual uh, kind of uh, toy to have the car. Uh, spent many an hour using that. My dad still swears that it's in the loft somewhere. That's my earliest memory is my dad giving me that and it had a slimer on the back that you used to like, pull in using a piece of string into the back of the car. That was so good. And then you could get the backpack <coughs> that would get ghosts. I had the full kit Ghostbusters voice. Everything. No, um, I love this trailer and I think the reason why I love this trailer so much is because it adds a, a darker twist yeah. than the remake. Because the one thing I loved about the... Hold on, I have to be careful. The original first two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, yeah, the two are good. The first two are good. What I like about them is, when I was a kid watching them, there were parts where I'd actually get scared. Yeah. So I'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah, what's yeah. going to happen? But then they'd also have a lot of jokes in there. So it was a great mix of, like, horror and comedy. Yeah. Then they did the remake. The only issue I have with the remake is not the casting. It's that it's too funny. No, no, trying no, to be it's too not. funny. There we go, thank you. It's trying to be too funny. I feel like it's a gag every two minutes. And the, the little callbacks they do to the original Ghostbusters, like Bill Murray's character doesn't believe in ghosts and gets thrown out the window. You have... The taxi driver was... Yeah, the taxi driver is played by the slightly bigger Dan guy. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd, there mm-hmm. we go. Thank you very much for that. Who else? The receptionist. So these guys yes. had... A- Cameo role in the yeah, new one. Not sort of older versions of their characters. They were yes, just... it's a, non, a non-canon a non cameo. Mm. Yeah. Whereas in the new one, they've said this is canon to the originals. It's part of the story, right? Yes, it's part of the story. It's so many years on because he finds, in the trailer, you see him find all yeah. the old suits and that nostalgia comes back. And I liked him. And who doesn't like Paul Rudd? True. Paul Rudd does say there hasn't been any ghost sightings in 30 years, so he's completely disregarding the remake from yes, a couple of years ago. I, He's just pushing it to one yes. side. They, well, they technically have to because it's not canon. Yeah, yeah. I but it's that. not to drift too much off it. They did the same thing in the most recent... Oh, what does... Friday the 13th? Is that Jason? Jason Voorhees. No, yeah, Halloween, Halloween, sorry. Halloween, Halloween with Mike Myers. Mike Myers. Yeah. In the newest one, when they ask them about all the stories about Jason, they're like, oh no, they're all rumours kids made up. And they're literally talking about every other plot line that happened of all the Halloweens between the very first one and this new one, just wiping all them mm. out of canon. Mm. So it's good that they've done that. But yeah, I like the dark appeal of the trailer and I'll Paul Rudd and the kid from Stranger Things. Will you go and watch it? Yes. At the cinema? Yes. Will you go and watch it at the cinema? I will, because I love the first one especially so much. But the trailer, I like the fact it was dark and they need to get back to that comedy slash horror thing. But there wasn't enough levity or comedy in the trailer for me I didn't get that what I thought was it was an awful lot of fan service and it was to get the original fans going oh it's got this it's got that yeah totally but I just wanted to see that little bit of magic that yeah. little bit of a little bit of more comedy in it. I don't know if any of you saw them but did you see the, the two, like a second glimpse of both the monsters yes so you've got the demon dog on the car bonnet you yeah. see the, ha- the the paw yeah, yeah yeah you see the paw hit yeah. and then in the car chase scene at first I thought why is he just shooting yeah, I yeah. thought it was kids being kids he's firing the laser mm. there's a split second cut where you see who I'm assuming is Slimer it's got to be Slimer yeah just yeah. literally zapping across the pavement being chased I was like yeah I saw that bit yes this is I'm, like, I'm interested to yeah. see whether and it, it's it's made me think about <laughs> new movies and how we're gonna 
have all of these new movies coming out because um, last month the Irishman came out. Everybody wanted to go and see it at the cinema, but it was also it's also been put out on Netflix at the same time. Yes. So I'm wondering whether Netflix are going to have this sort of deal moving forward or any other streaming platforms where they can bring out cinema release movies and then what that does to the cinema industry, really. Because mm. the last time I went to the cinema to see The Joker, I probably... I might, I might go and watch uh, the new Bond movie in April. Uh, mm. the cinema, but like Cinemas for like movies that I really want to kind of enjoy in this, that experience. Other than that, it's so much easier to put them on Netflix. So I'm wondering whether that's going to be the start of a trend and then we're going to see more movies, put whether it's Amazon Prime are doing a great thing as well with sport. I don't know if you've yeah, uh, noticed the, that. I see a lot of Premier League matches advertised. So they did one back at the beginning of December, the first week in December, and they are done one uh, this week, Christmas week, they're doing one as well, where you can watch any game. So for f- football fans, that's a rarity really, being able to pick the exact game that you want to watch that's in the Premiership. So I think we've got... A, a vision here or a slight glimpse at the streaming platforms are going to be quite become more powerful, you know. Mm, well, they you had Disney, they <clears throat> you had Netflix, and then Amazon Prime came and they've got their Amazon originals. Plus, they the good thing about Amazon is they have their originals, but then because they don't own as much content, they have the ability to then let you buy or rent, yes, straight through them. And what ended up happening is you had people like Disney brought up everything. So they already own Marvel, they had Star Wars, they brought National Geographic, they brought Fox, the right? entertainment. Yeah. So they brought the entertainment side of Fox, not the news or the yeah. sports side. And they're just building it all up because that's now all Disney's content. Netflix recently went and brought Nickelodeon. Uh-huh. So to get to your point, the next thing has got to be they start buying these... Because there's no more retail... They can't buy like a Blockbusters because Blockbusters is Do non-existent. Do you know Netflix approached Blockbusters originally? Back when, when it was called Love Film? Uh, mm. So was Love Film Netflix of old? Yes. Because I actually subscribed so, to Love Film and they used to actually send me DVDs. Love Film, they'd the send you DVDs through the post and then you could go online and start ordering them. And then, oh, I'm probably getting it a bit wrong, but what happened is I think, I don't know if they approached Blockbuster or if Blockbuster were given the opportunity to either buy or invest in Love Film. And Blockbuster basically said, streaming, was, no one's going to, what's yeah. no, get rid of that. People are going to want to come in and actually buy buy their popcorn, buy their drinks, and have that family night in, watch uh-huh. the DVD and bring it back. And then, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's strange now that we literally, everything is on our kind of devices, no matter what sort of device you use. Not, gone are the days of buying CDs, really. Yeah. Uh, apart from if it's a nostalgic reason. It's gone are the days of having a DVD. I was actually speaking to someone this week, uh, and they sent me a picture, and in the background they had a DVD collection. And I couldn't help but zoom in and just think, who even has DVDs? See, like, I, I'm sure a lot of people would have, uh, you know, like D- DVDs or out of habit, you've got your DVDs on display or in a in a um, DVD storage kind of box or whatever it may be. But really, how often do you watch DVDs? Not DVDs. See, Blu-rays. I'm 4K. Right. So I bought uh, an Xbox yep. to use as a 4K yes. Blu-ray player. Oh. And you I bought a remote this. control with it. Because... You can stream stuff in 4K, that's great, but it's a different bit rate. The best way, the absolute best quality you can get in the home environment is still to have physical format. So if I, if I see something I really love, like Star Wars, then yeah. I will buy it on 4K. I think for the uh, everyday usage, though, no, that's quite specific, and you're looking for something very specific there. Absolutely, and you're yeah. probably watching that, and... I dare I say, maybe convincing yourself that you can uh, see the difference in quality. Oh, there is. Now, how true that is or not, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask you. <laughs> but really, the fact that you've got your mobile device, you've got Netflix on there, and even the case of, you know, well, you, you can download Netflix to you watch on the train, for example. All your music's on there. Uh, I think all these streaming platforms are getting more and more powerful, and are starting kind of a streaming wars kind of uh, now. They are, but in terms of like what Rich was saying, f- five years ago, I'd say like two to five years ago, you only had really Netflix mm-hmm. and YouTube and then TV. If you're someone that doesn't watch TV, go and watch channels one to five now. And the quality is, it's terrible. And then if you're someone who's into movies, like I'm into movies, and yeah. when you get accustomed to a certain thing, for example, watching movies with no ad breaks, if I see, for example, Harry Potter come on TV, mm-hmm. I won't watch it on TV. I will specifically say, okay, it's on TV. I'm going to go and get that DVD and put it in. 
So I'm you watching. still watch DVDs? Yeah, because I can't, I can't do ad breaks. I've, I'm not part of the new generation, but now I know that there's plenty of places I can go to watch content with no ad breaks. I'm not going to watch TV's bad, bad quality and then ad break. And my conspiracy with ad breaks, I'm sure you, they miss out some of the film. It's not a Ooh. direct... It's not like they stop at 45 minutes and then play at 45.01. Are you on about TV? TV, yeah. Yeah, of course, Those they are, edit the film down. So, but yeah, I'm interesting point about that. You know that if a film came out back in the day and it was, say, an hour and 45 long, then they would sell it into the TV channels, especially in America, and they go, right, no, we can't sell enough advertising space. You need to make the film longer. So they go to John Carpenter or whatever, and he'd have to re-edit the film to make it longer so they could get rather than two or three you could get four ad breaks in to make the revenue so they'd extend films for no reason so I grew up watching some films and when I bought them on DVD or I now stream them they're shorter or they're different because it's a totally different edit but I, I, I will so say good. though talking it's interesting that ad breaks has formed a bit of the conversation because something no affiliation and uh, absolute no sponsorship but one of the benefits of Android uh, I sign up to YouTube premium personally yeah. my own personal choice yeah an opinion no ad breaks and sometimes if I'm actually using it on my brother's phone for example or watching something on YouTube he was showing me some jujitsu stuff the other day and we had to watch through an advert and I couldn't believe it because <laughs> I've been like a year or so without even seeing yeah. uh, an, an ad break on YouTube all of my consumption is YouTube um, so I'm signed up to premium there um, the UFC platform Fight yeah. Pass so I'm a massive MMA fan, so everything's on there. It's amazing that you can just these sort of things, and I'm sure it's the same. I know that WWE have got one. I'm sure of other sporting flat platforms as well. But no, if you're a fan of something, so I'm an MMA fan, but in particular UFC being the biggest company in that within that field, and I can now just for five ninety nine a month, I've got access to every single fight that's been on there. Plus they buy other kind of smaller independent shows, so you can watch that. So can even though we're living in an age now where we're consuming so much and a lot of it, really, my consumption is completely different to yours, completely mm. different to yours, but based on our interests. But we are getting all of what we could possibly want, whereas 15 years ago, it was Channel 1 to 5, Sky if you were lucky, yeah. and then you would be able to say to your friends, did you watch this last night? You know what, you've no. nailed it. The way that we can all... and the, We can all watch content how we want, that's the, our choice now. And like I say, it's... Pres- really prescriptive before so we've got the choice now and I yeah I'm the same I do the majority of my media consumption using my mobile phone or my tablet but if it's a big film I'll still pay the money go to the cinema because you get that social experience of watching it with other people the the R's the laughs the cries whatever Um, but yeah I will then travel home and I'll be watching it on my phone the fact we've got the choice and obviously you know you've got big screens great quality 4k streaming you can all do it how you want now and I also love uh, going into like a what I call a YouTube hole or a oh, Facebook down a rabbit hole. hole. Yeah. And you start off watching <laughs> the one of the strange ones for me was I must have been watching some YouTube videos, and then I'd, <laughs> I'd I fell asleep and I wake up and I'm having <laughs> tours of Chinese production factories, <laughs> and I don't know how, but it kind of became and a thing that I was watching for a while that'll now affect the targeted adverts you get oh yeah, 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 yeah. interesting go to a Chinese factory Sean <laughs> here you go mate here's an advert it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a welcome a welcome relief <laughs> yeah, from the stuff that's on there at the minute so uh, but yeah what, what platforms are you signed up to do you watch um, currently signed up to I've got Netflix Amazon Prime YouTube Premium even though I haven't watched one YouTube original mm. I Kobe start- Kai you don't watch Cobra Kai? Nope. No? I started watching the Eminem battle rap movie that yeah. he made, but I got like halfway through it and then I think I fell asleep with it. I've got Hulu, but I'm looking to upgrade to Hulu Premium because I only went for Hulu for the, I think there was a program I wanted to watch on there. But Hulu does it smart. Hulu has, you pay a set amount for streaming, but it comes with ads, or you can pay a premium amount and there are no ads coming through it. Oh, so now they, they want... Every little bit of a... Well, everyone does because you've got... You had the big ones, I'd say. Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime. Disney Plus have now come in. You've then got HBO, who are having their own streaming services, which I wouldn't say no to because Game of Thrones was on there. Chernobyl was on there. Watchmen, if anyone's watching Watchmen. Is anyone here watching Watchmen on HBO? I hope... If someone at home is watching Watchmen, HBO, can you please just drop a comment and then me and you can talk about the wonderful thing that is Watchmen on HBO. 
And if anybody wants to talk MMA action, then uh, we'll, we'll make this a bit as I have absolutely, I haven't watched any Star Wars or any uh, any movie. Uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because what's happening as well is we're kind of signing up for more and more. So you've named four or five there. And, you know, I've got four or five subscriptions going out. But mm. to be completely honest, I'm not moaning about that at all. It's like money well spent. Yeah. Five ninety nine to be able to access any any fight that I ever want to see out of complete history of uh, the UFC. Sign me up. Netflix, it's great. <laughs> you know, there's no complaints there. YouTube Premium is great. So, but it is interesting to see now that our habits have changed. Yeah. Maybe the TV license will completely die soon, and you know all these subscription packages will be. The norm. Do you know who the TV license is for? BBC. No? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Three channels. BBC yeah, One, BBC Two, BBC yeah, Three, oh, and BBC they, Four. What wow. are they producing? It's interesting. But, um, uh, Doctor Who. I don't know if anyone here is a fan. I'm a big fan of Doctor Who. But apart from that, I'm trying to think of what else BBC. David Attenborough? David Attenborough. Yeah, yeah. It's on Netflix. He's the old dude with birds. Ne yeah, he's on Netflix, Netflix because Netflix. of what he was doing on BBC. Yeah. And he's just released that new one on BBC, Seven World, One Planet. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I'm actually annoyed about? The uh, on Netflix is um, the festive favourites. When you go on there, the choice of uh, Christmas movies on there mm. is appalling. Anyone? I don't. No. I don't Susie. I'm. <laughs> no. No idea. <laughs> Anybody with John? No. Like the best one that they've got on there must be. Uh, they haven't got any of the, like the classics on there. They're all kind of like. B movies. <laughs> so yeah. I'm really disappointed with that. Where's my home? Give me Home Alone, Jingle All the Way, Miracle on 34th Street, Christmas Carol, at least. Die Hard. Die Hard. What, they've got none of them. The and in, in worse, The Grinch. This is even worse. I put The, the Grinch was on a, a Sky Channel the other day, so I put it on around my mum's. Uh, I thought, oh, I'll put The Grinch on a second. And it's like a new animated version. It's not even Jim Carrey now. Oh, so that no. happened without me even knowing. Well, I was just going to really quickly say, <clears throat> people complain about, you say like four or five services. People say, I don't want to pay four or five services. I'd sooner pay one amount and get one service. But if one service like Netflix or Amazon or whatever had all the content in one place, what's going to happen? There's no competition. Yeah. They don't push themselves. You don't get the variety. You don't get the obscure stuff. Like, I've just finished watching season one of The Boys and I'm kind of sold into it. I've just started on The yeah. Thing oh, now. So good. Uh, Swamp Thing. And yeah, if you pull everything into one place, it's like games consoles again, go back to that. If one games console's got everything, there's, you remove competition, they don't have to try so hard, we all lose out in the end. Before we move on, I'm going to pre-warn you, Rich. I started watching Swamp Thing. It got cancelled. It's got, it's got cancelled? Ah, so I've stopped watching it after like episode two or three. I, I'm at the end of episode one, and I was really excited about it because it's really pretty horrible it's, yeah it's pretty grim it's i wasn't like expecting the thing but in a swamp yeah and the origin the way the origin happened i wasn't expecting it and i was like oh no. i was like let me research i was like let me research it because it's dc as well so i was like yeah, let me DC. research this and then it literally just it popped up and it was like cancelled and i was like oh it's like a proper serialized disturbing sci-fi horror it's really dark it's really bleak great characters good effects yeah, good budget. I can't Fantastic believe it got effects. Effects. But it's DC, <laughs> so it got cancelled. There you go. <laughs> That's probably what it is. DC. But again, you had Cloak uh, no, and Dagger uh, yeah. on... Don't, don't watch it. Cloak and Dagger on Amazon Prime. Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, I'm sure that's been cancelled, just oh. stopped. Give me something that's not cancelled. Well, this it's all going in with the streaming war, so... Um, Iron Fist, I, Luke I, Cage... That wasn't, that wasn't that keen on Iron Fist, like Luke Cage. Iron Fist is the is the worst of all the Defenders. Basically, really? the whole Defender series, if I had, it would be Daredevil, Jess jo mm. Oh, that was all right. Daredevil, series one, Jess Jones. Yeah. <laughs> series, then Luke Cage, then series two of Jess Jones, and then Iron Fist somewhere near the, Iron Fist near was, the bottom. But they Sean all, grew his hair out a bit. But he's all his martial arts background as yeah, well. He could, there we go, Sean Iron is Iron Fist. Fist. <laughs> Can we get Susie to spend a couple of hours editing me to look like Iron Fist? No. Ching! <laughs> Susie's just laughing behind the camera like yes. You, can you know when you watch those YouTube videos and someone's like, yeah, if you just click the link above my head and no link appears. She's already <laughs> shaking her head saying, no way am I doing that. So. <laughs> but the streaming wars, I think it's interesting. I think the, the way that we're consuming content is uh, interesting there. It's definitely changed. Yep. It's evolving, which is yep. good. And it's really important as well, I suppose, that the 
the free lens that we've got on our products to be able to consume that because only a couple of years ago really tech has tech has always moved moving in the right way forward but we wouldn't be able to have consumed stuff the way that we do now really like comfortably such as things such as the infinity screen has changed yeah, that, yeah. you know um, the battery lives and this is talking yeah. across the industry right yeah um, I'm really lucky so I'm using a Note 10 right now. My ba- I don't have to worry about my battery life at exactly. all. It's gonna, it's used better. My screen is fantastic. The quality is great. The audio is great. Yeah, yeah. We're really lucky with the AKG headphones. Uh, how have you found using them? Oh, I love them. Yeah. I Do, you know, them. so the, we have got the tech to be able to get on the train in Birmingham, fly, uh, jump down to London, and get here and having watched an episode or a few fights, wherever it may be, your choice. And in a in a kind of immersive way, thanks to the tech that we've got now, you know. It is for all the film lovers out there like me. With tech moving forward, and a lot of people, I say, a lot of people assuming that everyone now wants to watch stuff on their phones. I think it's more of my phone's this good, I can watch stuff on them. Mm. The next thing that I would do is build my own cinema, or as you do. If you've got a spare I'm ass- afternoon. I'm assuming they've got what the money. What do you mean to build your own cinema? Build your own cinema or say something like, I'm not going to put any brand on it, but we, we this brand, is now joining View or Odeon or Showcase. I'm mm. sure, you know when you're on BBC and I have to say, or any other brand. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, any cinema say, we're now providing the screens for them. When you get in there, it's more of a story when you're seeing that on a screen and then you want to come back and watch it on your phone screen as well. But when we were talking about streaming wars, and we're talking about cinema, I think that's the next step for streaming wars. I think they're going to start buying cinemas because they're now going to control. They're controlling what you're watching on TV. Yeah. So they've got that control. What comes out in the movies can't really be helped, but it's like what you said. Irishman came yeah. out in cinemas on Netflix. Yeah. I'm sure Annihilation, if anyone's seen Annihilation on Netflix, no. that I'm sure was in the cinema at some point yeah. as well. It makes sense for someone like Netflix to say, okay, we've now brought showcase do you think you could have uh there's ever any scope for like a series to come out i'm just this is blue sky thinking now right but you could have a series where you watch one or two episodes on your device but then certain episodes are only available at the cinema that you've got you're forced to go to the cinema to watch and then some episodes you consume it in different mediums some episodes you might Mm. Imagine what that could do for, like, I suppose like the, the economy as a whole. Mm. Yeah. If you're forcing people, oh, the next bit is live action, you have to go to the theatre to watch it. If, if they had streaming projectors in cinemas, because they're, di- they're all digital now, pretty much, yeah, aren't they? But right. if you had streaming cinemas, then, yeah, you could push an episode out to 5,000 cinemas around the country, whatever, and then be able to enjoy it because part you of can, the series. you can go to the cinema and watch, like, certain sporting events uh, hosted at certain cinemas... Uh, like fo- a lot of fights and things like that happen, or concerts as well. But that's the issue. So I don't know the numbers, but let's say you have a 20 million reach with your streaming service. The minute you then say, right, we're going to put this episode in the cinema, you'd one have to do it with something that big, people would want to actually leave their house and go. Top of my head, for everyone watching at home, before we knew what it was, Game of Thrones the very last series se- season, when they said The Long Night, which is the big battle, that's going to be on at the cinema, mm-hmm. that could have worked. Mm. But then you're also reducing your fan base because you'll say it's only at this kind of cinema or it's only at this cinema. And there are some cities that don't have, like, we're Brummies, so luckily for us, there's a cinema on every, <laughs> every corner, it feels like, yeah. and there is every type of cinema. There are some Maybe. smaller cities, a couple of thousand, hundred thousand people that are going to miss out completely because they can't get to a specific cinema. It's 2020 next week. You can get to a cinema, can't you? Some places haven't got 4G, Sean. <clears throat> Where I live, got 5G. Where I live, oh, great. 5G. Not good. We've, we've barely got standard definition. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't name it. My, I'll be a wanted man. <laughs> my, last question, my last question of the episode before we wrap things yep. up, being as we're talking Netflix. Do you have the subtitles on, yes or no? Yes. Yes. And why? I, I can predict why you're going to say, why you've said yes. Go on, then. It might be the same as me. Having a child. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Go on. Go on. What, what, Since what, having a child. What, you're teaching them to read <laughs> via, <laughs> via, via Netflix. Anything and everything they do. See, people then probably thought, oh, that's responsible in case they're watching something with bad language or violence. You can t-. No, not at all. Mm. The baby watches me play Call of Duty, so <laughs> violence is, <laughs> violence is <laughs> out, it's gone out the window. Right? Out the window. <laughs> it's all for the baby playing with toys. She's making noise. Yeah. If I'm holding her or trying to get to sleep, she's making noise. Yeah. 
love you, baby. Sometimes the, the missus comes back, starts talking, and yeah. I'm, I'm watching TV. So I'm, I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. so I can completely switch, I'm, I'm, switch out, listen to what they're saying, but I'm still reading because I'm, I'm one of those people that if I'm into something and I feel like I've missed yes. one word, I'm rewind, play. I get it. Oh. Mine's completely different. I think it's just that I'm lazy or. Uh, there's no, a fun, no. like that. There used to be a meme that said I'd have the subtitles on so I can I don't have to miss out when I'm making a lot of noise eating sort of thing. But I uh, I, I I always have the subtitles on, uh, and I just wondered whether I was alone in that well, because I'll, a lot of people come over and they'll comment on it. Well, have you, when the baby goes to bed, you can have the telly really low or off, but you can still read the subtitles. Yeah, still have mm. the subtitles. Miles inspired me, and he doesn't know this, to try anime. Oh. And I thought, right, I'm going to get into... Because I, I, I actually went to Amsterdam with a guy um, that I, I'd only met on the trip. And he was telling me all about some great like martial arts style anime. And then some great like real deep stories. And he convinced me that anime isn't just Japanese cartoons. No, I thought, right, I'm going to give this a go. The only problem is I keep the subtitles on. And when, I've, when they've been dubbed in English... What they're saying and the subtitles do not match up. <laughs> and rather than kind of turn the subtitles off, I'd rather just skip the anime. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone subtitles that tells you to watch stay. anime, do not watch an English dub version. Watch the no. Japanese version with subtitles. Yeah, right. that, that is what I've heard. Best way to watch it. So there's one for our viewers and listeners. And I wanted to do something a little bit different. And maybe we seem to be getting comments in where the guys ask us stuff. You put me on the spot there a lot and I couldn't answer the questions the way I would have liked to. Good, good. Maybe we should ask our viewers and listeners a question each every episode and then we can kind of uh, interact with them that way mm-hmm. so mine would be really asking me in um in form with the what we've discussed on the podcast would be streaming where is that going and uh what do people sign up to see if there's any other platforms mm-hmm. of interest and we get to know we can get to know a few of our viewers and listeners that way miles anything that you want to know um what's the best movie trailer you've seen recently i want to know what movies are coming out I'd probably say, uh, what audio tech do you use to elevate the experience at home? So do you buy a soundbar? Have you got 6.1, 8.1? That's a conversation in itself. But let's uh, let's do that one offline, off off the podcast. Uh, We'll interact with everyone that uh, comments. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, anything Uh, else. My nephew got on my back about that. He was like... Uncle Miles, if you're a YouTuber, you've got to tell people what to do. That's why I didn't comment. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh sorry. So, Isaac, if you're watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. There we go. And uh, thank you for listening, guys. And we'll see you at the next one. Don't forget, the Christmas special is out now. You can watch that as well as uh, in addition to our usual episodes. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next episode. We have been the Freestyle Podcast.